Moving on. Number 11. Okay. So we've got these expressions 10 over 7x minus 3 over 5x. They want it in simplest form. We got to get common denominators, right? So let's do that first, common denominators. Um, well, how would you do it? Let's see if you guys would do it the same way I would. Maybe you know an easier way. I would just pick a number they both go into. Um, so you could do 7 over 7 here. Actually, this uh, we'll just do it this way. And this will be 5 over 5. Okay. So we get 50 over 35x minus 21 over 35x. Um, 20, 50 minus 21 is 29 over 35x. I don't think that reduces because 29 is a prime number, I think. So 29 over 35x, choice three. You're done. Move on. That's it. So I just took the number on each side and multiplied it by the other. And that was it. Erase that. Let's move down. All right, box and whisker. I hate box and whisker because I don't even remember doing this back in the day. I'm way too old for box and whisker. And once you get the higher level math, I don't think I've seen this again. But the only thing I should tell you that you should know is the quartiles. There's a way for figuring it out. And if you want me to, I could do it in the future. But when they give you a visual representation here and they give you a graph, all you got to know that this first one here, that first line is the first quartile. That second line right there. So you're really looking at the box. Just look at the box for the quartiles. The second one is the second quartile and that number right there is the third quartile. And really another name for the second quartile is the median. That's the middle number. So if they ever say what's the median, you're looking at whatever value is at that line. They ask you what's the first quartile? It's 25. What's the second quartile? It's 30. What's the third quartile? It's 45. So this one wants to know the second one. It's 30. Choice two. We're done. It's that easy. Again, just look at the box. First quartile, second, third. And that's it. Okay. Keep going. Uh, 13. The length of a rectangle is 3 feet less than twice its width. Ugh. If x represents the width. All right. So when they start giving me variables, this is when I like to write them in. So I'll do it over here. X equals width. Okay. And what they say, the length of the rectangle is three feet less than twice the width. So twice the width is 2x and three feet less, minus three. That's what the length is. Okay, because I know it could be confusing. You might, some people might write 3 minus 2x, but you got to do the multiplication part first. Twice the width and 3 less. So what does I want to know? Which inequality represents the area of the rectangle that is at most 30 square feet? Well, the area is, gonna, is always length times width. So I'm really doing x times 2x minus 3. And we want that to be at most 30 square feet. So I'll put the 30 over here. And I'll see if you guys can figure out my arrows here. Or my, my alligator mouth. Which way is it supposed to go? Well, I want it at most 30 square feet. So it's got to be equal to it or less than. Or less than and equal to it. Uh, which one's that? X. This one here. Choice number one. All right, does that make sense? Length times width, and we want it at most. So the area has got to be 30 or less. Okay. Let's go to, which one's a function? This is a kind of an easy thing to realize or, or to explain. Functions have to pass the vertical line test. So I draw this, passes the vertical line test. There's no two points at any x value. I draw this, passes the vertical line test. What happens if I draw this? There are, let's say this is an x equals 2. At the value of 2, we have 1, 2, 3 values. This is not a function, not a 
function. Okay, so when you test these, you, it's not that hard to do. You're just going to figure out which one has two x values. For example, number one, there's an x value at three, uh, three four, and three five. So let's just draw this one out to make sense. At three, there's a point three four, and right above it, three five. So this would fail the vertical line test. Ooh, excuse me, that's pretty crappy, but you get the idea. So one is out. Let's look at number three here. Six, seven, six, five. So when you go to graph this, at six, there's six, seven, and let's just make it down here, and six, five. Fails the vertical line test, so that's a crappy one. That was a crappy one. This one doesn't work. So let's just speed this up. This is at 0, 2, and this has 0, 8. So what happens if you graph it, there's a point here at 0, 2, and then right above it, there's one at 0, 8. So you know this one's done. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, 2, 1. There's no duplicate points here. So basically what it's saying is every x has to have only one y value, or there can only be one x. I don't know. I always get confused when I try and explain this, but every there has to be an independent x value and you can't have duplicates. So you can't have x equals 3, 3, 4, and 3, 5, and 3, 6. You get the idea. So just draw it out if you ever get confused. All right. The weights of 40 students were recorded if the 75th percentile of their weights was 140. Okay. So all you're going to do for percentiles, you, ha you got your number, your total, and I like to write this on the paper, your total equals 40. We want to know what the 75th, 75 percent of those students, their weights were at 140. So 0.75 times them is equal to what? So 75 times 40, or 75 percent times 40 is 30. So that means 30 students were in the 75th percentile. Uh, 75 percentile of their weights was 140. What is the total number of students who weighed more than that? So we know 30 students were at 140 or less. So how many are left over? 10, right? So sorry if that was a little confusing the way I explained it. Just multiply the percentile times the total. So. All I did was 75% times 40. That means 30 kids are 140 or less. How many are left over? 10. So 10 have to be bigger than 140. All right, cool. Let's scroll down. Number 16. Slope of the line represented by the equation. Okay, we just want to get this in y equals mx plus b form. So let's do that. You're going to use that your algebra skills. Sorry, one second. All right, you're going to use your algebra skills. So we got, um, I'm going to rewrite this, 3y plus 4x equals 7. I'm going to minus 4x from both sides. Okay, 3y equals negative 4x plus 7. Now, I'm going to divide 3 on both sides. Divide 3 on both sides. y equals, and the nice thing is, I don't even have to do the whole thing. My slope is just going to be negative 4 divided by 3x. I'm not even going to worry about the rest of it because I'm just looking for slope, right? Negative 4 thirds. That's it. You're done. So just get it in the equation or, or get y by itself. y equals mx plus b. Get y by itself. Okay. Let's keep going. Okay. Number 17. It says, what is radical 150 plus... Um, radical 24 expressed in simplest radical form. So the way I would do this actually I would just look at radical 150 and see how I can break it up into something that has a perfect square. So I know 25 goes into 150 right you get 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150. So how does that help us out? That's radical 25 times radical 6 right and radical 25 is just 5 so we got 5 radical 6 okay so now 24 
if I want to do radical 24, again, I want to get something that's a perfect square. I can do uh, radical 4 and radical 6. Radical 4 is 2, so that's 2 radical 6. So now we have 5 radical 6 plus 2 radical 6 gives us 7 radical 6. Choice number 1. All right, makes sense. That's how I would break it down. Let's move on, erase that. All right, number 18. In the triangle below, the measure of angle A is 90, AB is equal to 6, AC 8, and BC 10. So we got the whole thing in front of us right here. They want to know what is the ratio, or what ratio represents the sine of B. So if you remember Sokotoa, um, sine, or from Sokotoa, S O H, Sokotoa. The sine was the opposite over the hypotenuse. So first you got to recognize what's the angle we're talking about here. Angle B, right? Angle B opposite is the eight, right? You shine a flashlight. Which wall does it hit? So it's the eight, and we know the hypotenuse is always the one opposite the ninety degrees, which is ten. So 8 tenths, choice 4. That's it. Let me erase those. We'll go down. Number 19. Okay, so 19 says the equations 6x plus 5y equals 300 and 3x plus 7y equals 285. They represent the money collected from selling gift baskets in a school fundraising event. X represents the cost of each snack gift basket, and Y represents the cost for each chocolate gift basket. What is the cost for each chocolate gift basket? So maybe what I'll do is I'll write down uh, real quick what the variables are. So X is X equals each snack gift basket, gift basket, and Y equals each, uh, what we say, chocolate? Chocolate gift basket so just so I don't confuse anything so this is what's called a system of equations we've got two equations they've got X's and Y's um, we want to cancel those uh, variables out so we can figure out what or cancel one of those variables out so we can figure out the other one and this is how we're gonna do it I'll take the first equation I'll just rewrite it 6x plus 5y equals 300 and under it I'm gonna write the other one but with the variables nice and lined up which they kinda already are 3x plus 7y y equals 285. Here's what I'm going to do. It'd be nice if these x's were the same value. So to do that, I'm going to multiply this bottom equation and everything in it by 2. So here's what happens. I'll rewrite the top one again. Sorry, it takes a second. 6x plus 5y equals 300. Now let's write the bottom one. 2 times 3x, 6x. 2 times 7y. 14y. 2 times 285. Well, if you got your calculator, you can do it. I think it's 570. 570. So here's the nice thing. Um, I ran out of space a little bit, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just subtract the equations. So let me put my parentheses there. I'll put a line over here. Sorry if it gets a little sloppy. So here's what I'm going to do 6x minus 6x. Zero, right? Crosses out. 5 minus 14. That's negative 9. I'll write it over here. So negative 9y. So it's 5 minus 14. 300 minus 570 is negative 270. Okay. Well, we can get rid of the negatives because they both sides have a negative. So now we just have 9y equals 270. Well, 9 goes into 27 three times, and we'll just add the 0. So y equals 30, and that was why I wrote down this stuff in the beginning. Y is the chocolate. So each one of those chocolate gift baskets is 30. So the main thing was here, though. You write the two equations, you stack them, and then you multiply or divide or do what you have to do to get one of the variables the same as the other. In this case, I multiplied the bottom equation by 2. All right. Let's erase all this junk. Move on to number 20. Which equation represents the axis of symmetry of the graph? All right, so you just should know axis of symmetry. You're going to memorize this. Is uh, here we go. 
axis of symmetry symmetry is um negative b yeah negative b over 2a so the number that's in the front here is your a value that's your b value that's your c value but we, we don't care about c right now so the b value is a 4 so it's going to be negative 4 all over 2a there's a 1 there we don't see it but there's an imaginary 1 all over 2 times 1 that's 4 or negative 4 over 2 which is just negative 2 so oh here's another thing I forgot to write it it's x equals so your answer is x equals negative 2 because if you think about it when you got a parabola and it does let's say something like I don't know something like this your axis of symmetry the line that that splits it in half is a line that goes up and down so lines that go up and down are x equals lines okay so that one might be x equals 1 x equals 1 but in our case we got x equals negative 2 alright choice number one